Hi everyone, this is Jason here from Nathaniel. In this lesson, we are going to look at 10 really creative chord inversion exercises, right? Uh, normally, when we practice the subject of chord inversions, it's just a fairly boring job. You just write it down, play them one by one and move along aimlessly. So what I want to do in this lesson is actually get you to make music while practicing your chord inversions, right? Why not do that? Why can't the process of learning the chord inversions, which is like a very, you know, important piano chapter and can get very uh, mind-boggling sometimes, let it be a lot of fun as well, right? So I'm going to take two chords in this lesson through your feedback because some of you are very happy with my philosophy of not using C major to explain everything. Uh, some of you want C major. So I thought I'll do both. I'm going to do B flat major. Just take that one chord, show you various exercises on B flat major and then show you various exercises on C major. Okay, and all these exercises are at different levels. I would highly recommend to stay tuned till the end of the video where I'm also going to suggest five more ways to add to these 10 exercises, right? Five more approaches. So if you get bored with these 10 exercises, if they are over, well, there's more. Okay, so stay tuned till the very end and don't forget to subscribe, turn on the bell if you haven't already. Let's get started right away. So the first exercise is just what we call as block chords, where you hit the chord and the specific inversion four times each. Let's recap the three inversions of the B flat major chord. First of all, you have B flat major, this is B flat D F. That's what we also call as the root position where the root starts things off. Then we have D, F, B flat, which is the first inversion. How do we identify the first inversion? The root note is at the top of the chord. It's the highest note. So root position, root at the bottom. First inversion, root at the top. And then second inversion, the roots inside, roots in the middle. So root, first, second inversion just get used to those those are the three shapes the three piano inversions of playing any any chord so coming to c major also which we're doing two chords in this series c major c e g e g c g c e so root position c major root at the bottom first inversion c major root at the top first second inversion c major with the root in the center so exercise number one is just going to be block chords four times each of each inversion going up and then going down and then we'll also look at some accents. Let's get cracking. So I'm going to play it for you and then explain. Okay, so the first chord B flat because it starts with B flat is a bit tricky. So you could play it like this or you could play it like this. Or you can jump your fingers, it's fine. The whole purpose is to latch on to the next one. So, B flat, still B flat, come back. So, we are doing root, first, second, back to first. Okay. If you are a pedal user, if you use the sustain pedal, you can hold the pedal at the end while you're shifting. So, pedal, pedal. So then you get a staccato and the legato, the best of both worlds. So, staccato first three, pedal, staccato first three, pedal, 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 back. Okay, and then you do this for C major. Inversion. Okay. So we're trying to accent the fourth beat. It's really important that you accent the fourth beat. It pushes your shifting sensibilities even more. Okay. This is the first exercise, block chords. The next thing is one of my favorite rhythms. It's called as umpa. Okay. So to do umpa, what you do is you take the root of the chord, B flat. And then you take the fifth of the chord, which is F. And then play the chord every and or every eighth note. 
I'll play you and then show you. So next inversion, next inversion, back. So it's root chord fifth chord. Root of the chord chord. Fifth of the chord chord. Then root shift new inversion. So na 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 ta da na na. Just go with that, and I'd encourage you to also try and sing something. Na 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 na. Even though you're just playing one chord, make it fun, and by singing it also improves your hand independence. Hand independence on the piano is not only about the two hands; it's about your mind being freer from the two hands, right? Then you focus on other things like timing, chord, and you know what your other bandmates are doing. So, so there's your umpa, and a very small modification is waltz, which adds one more chord. Waltz, as we generally observe, is a three by four song or a three by four time signature. So you have three beats in a bar. So I'll play it and show you. It's rather easy. Root chord, chord, fifth chord, chord, root chord, chord. So root chord, chord, fifth chord, chord. Left, right, right, left, right, right. Umpa earlier was like someone marching with their hands. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Waltz is left, right, right, left, right, right. So how does that work? Left, right, right. Okay. Root, chord, chord, fifth. You can do it on C major. And then of course stretch out your inversion. C. First inversion. Second inversion. back If you like to play the bass lower feel free I actually like the bass lower And if you know some other chords why not go to maybe an F Fun workout right so moving forward let's do another one called broken chords with broken chords i am going to show you this rhythm in 3 4 i think 3 4 will sound really nice for broken chords let me just play you the technique and i'll play you on b flat okay so b flat b flat b flat it's still b flat So how do we explore how do we explain this technique it's what i call as the out in out in out in technique okay so the outer two notes b flat and f and the inside note which is d so you go explore which fingers work it's going to change for each chord out in but the technique is the same out in out in out in out in out in out right and if you count it 1 and 2 and 3 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 1 2 3 3 by 4 not 6 8 3 by 4 1 and 2 and 3 and 1 right so that's your out in broken chord technique so let's now look at broken chords on c the c major chord pretty much sim- similar that's c major first second first so you can do this with even a minor chord the fingers are just going to change So now moving forward let's now look at some arpeggio rhythms where we can again continue to explore chord inversions okay this if i'm not mistaken is pattern number 5 so you go i'll play it and show you Okay so one might argue that these are triplets or you could be playing it over a 12 way time signature uh, I'm just going to say these are triplets one triplet two triplet three triplet four triplet down 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 so you may be guessing what I'm doing I'm just going up in inversions and I'm 
adding the root shape at the top as well so this one this one back to root and now descend from the top note of the chord pretty much it so let's do that again root first second inversion back to root descending root descending second descending first descending root again and with arpeggios you can flip you can cross your fingers especially on the way down to get a more a more kind of legato sound right it is tough uh, i'd leave legato to you really because legato is something tough when you're practicing inversions but you could use the pedal to achieve that you know lift and close don't hold the pedal all the time it's going to sound a bit very muddy if you just keep it held down okay so triplets again triple it triple it triple it triple it triple it okay then you have arpeggios over 3 4 Okay, so what I mean by that is arpeggios over a three by four time signature, and it also allows us to add one more note to each triad, even though it is not an extra note. You go B flat D F, and the high B flat. So B flat D F B flat. Okay, you are adding that with the pinky. Okay, this is the pattern which I have for you. One two three e one two three e one two three e and two and go. So you just roll each inversion, and if you're not sure with shifting yet, just do one at a time for a while. Like enjoy just one shift or one position. Now change whenever. confident right you can all also do this on c major descending okay so you can do this over minor chords or whichever chord and like i said you don't have to play them all at once together you can just hand pick one of the inversions and just roll with that anyway when you actually use inversions in a song they are meant to link up two chords with almost the same shape together for example c major and f major c major is quite easy F major is also easy because they are very close to each other. That's the point of inversions. And we've done a lot of YouTube lessons on chord inversions. There's a playlist with quite a few lessons, so do check it out. We've linked it in the description. Moving forward, so the next thing you can do is just have some fun with blocks itself. Play them in interesting rhythms. One rhythm which I think you'll all be familiar with is the tresio rhythm, right? Even if you don't know what the word tresio means. you you are reminded of right tank 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 that sort of rhythm which is used a lot for the modern day dance songs right and general dance music in in general so you go i'll play you so what you are trying to do is instead of just holding the chord you are working on your rhythm so So that's one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four one and two and three and four and one and two. And if you can get the pulse in the left, it'll be great. Or just hold the root of the chord in the left. C major. One more time. That's the tresio, and now let's add another rhythm to the equation by swinging the music a bit. So you can do ta ta da ta da ta da ta da ta da, and three and four and one. Swing music is very popular for blues and jazz. So one rhythm which they use a lot is what what we call as the Charleston rhythm, which goes something like this. Which is 
one and two and three and four and one and two and and the and you're supposed to play choppy one and two and three and four and one and two and three and f- moving dan dan and four and one and two and three and four staccato at the end and four and one and two and three and one and two and three okay you could also start at the end and then land at the on beat so one and two and three and four and one and two, right so and three and three and three you can do all sorts of charleston variations so that's about charleston on the swing uh, and then earlier we learned the thresio which is a very common uh, pop rhythm it's also called as a pop clave okay moving forward right so i have saved the more interesting ones for the end uh, these use what i call as dual speed arpeggios so you take your right hand let's say you take c major chord and you play c major in a pattern of your choice maybe that now if you count this you could count it as eighth notes 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 while in the other hand you are supposed to play half of this speed so pam 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 so you just play slower half the speed of the right hand and it provides a really nice sound because none of the notes clash with each other as opposed to it's one of the powers the piano player has you have your two hands which are very independent from each other right the guitar has a challenge in in that sense because you pluck here and here you're holding the chord so you don't have that independence as what we have so make use of it so you go so you could take a chord double speed there single speed there explore the inversions I'm also floating the left hand which you can also do so if you're confident doing both hands fair enough or else just hold the C Okay whatever works but the idea of dual arpeggios is to get both hands to play arpeggios you can also do like four four speed here and double speed here so here you can do 16th notes basically one which is sort of the same it's just faster just double the speed you can then look at some interesting rhythms you can probably merge 2 with 3 you can do an arpeggio which is dividing the beat by 2 you can do another arpeggio which is dividing the beat by 3 let's see how we can build that 1 2 3 something like this 1 and 2 and 3 and 1 so you can do something like that so you find a 3 going on in the left and you get a 3 4 in the right these are also known as polyrhythms now i have done a lot of rhythm lessons a lot of rhythm concepts and uh, i have definitely touched on these rhythms and most of these rhythms as only rhythm so if you want to explore your rhythm study do check out our rhythm playlist which we've put in the description okay so the last pattern will be what i call as floating inversions where you take a chord you take okay let's explore this with just the c major chord you can do it with any chord So you go Just take the top note and just wander with your last finger just wander a- a- around that This one note Then So that's C going one down then now let me try one up that's d 
one higher. You can do it with an arpeggio or do it with blocks. One up, one up, one up the the top note and one down the top note. Let's try that on B flat. these melodic options so you can even build construct like a nice song you know or a riff or a small harmonic phrase you know right guys so we've looked at 10 rather exhaustive techniques to practice chord inversions all sorts of things right starting with simple blocks arpeggios broken chords to the two hands coming together and then experimenting creatively with the floating options where you bring out the melody, looking at different rhythm patterns, swing rhythms and uh, straight rhythms, dividing by four triplets, all sorts of stuff. So I would really suggest that you practice these 10 rhythms with any chord you want or a couple of chords and then uh, glide through the different inversions take your time with the exercise that's very important i don't think you can get all of this in one sitting so you need to take your time with it and if you are an advanced learner what you can always do is try and grow from what we've done just now the first point i would like to say is try out the same inversion which you did in the right hand also in the left hand so if you're doing a pattern like um, play that inversion in the left hand or maybe the same pattern right so basically do whatever you are doing in the right hand in the left hand or at least hold the chord it's good to get acquainted with the inversions in both hands because if you do it with the left it'll help you with your melody playing in the right hand right the other thing is you can try out a variety of different rhythm patterns like you can just hold the chord and just see something else you know which you'd like to play and another thing which i always like to do which a lot of people end up doing when you practice all instruments be it the guitar the trumpet or even the piano is just look at the circle of fifths go ascending the circle and just play all your major chords then go descending the circle and then do all your minor chords so for example start on c now what's after c in the circle counterclockwise that will be this way f B flat or you can just do the 1 4 5 chord progression of the major scale so if you're on the key of C 1 is C 4 is F 5 is G so F G back to Right? And again, if you're like an intermediate to advanced learner, you can also practice this entire drill using extended harmony. Like instead of triads, you can look at sevenths. So there'll be three inversions for a seventh chord or four shapes. You'll have this one, this one, this one you'll have to practice four instead of three which we would do if we are learning triads right so the final embellishment you can do if you are an in intermediate or an advanced kind of learner is in the left hand instead of playing the root only of the chord you can kind of have an interplay a bass interplay within between the root the octave the fifth and maybe the third as well so you can do uh, so instead of just holding B flat, while you do the exercise, you can do, you can do a toggle. 
between the root and the fifth. Right? Right? Add the third. You get the obladi oblada pattern. So basically add the fifth and the third along with the root. Right guys, so this is pretty much it. These are 10 chord inversion exercises which will hopefully take your chord piano playing to the next level and I hope you enjoy them. That's the whole point of giving you these exercises so that you can actually digest chord inversions, take your time, it will take time, but these are just ways you can practice chords. Otherwise what happens is to learn inversions, you do it, you know, in a very textbook way you look at the chord you just stare at it and play it but actually you have to use it in music with some kind of an actual real world rhythm pattern so i have given you 10 real world rhythm patterns at various levels hopefully right so all the best with the exercise again this is jason here from nathaniel if you haven't already do consider subscribing to our channel leave us a comment with something you'd like us to do next hit the like share the video and also get yourself a copy of all our handwritten notes on Patreon. Uh, all the exercises are written down for you. So do check that out for further reference. Cheers.